In 2008, the world experienced a financial crisis whose effects still suffice today, notably the slowdown in economic growth and development. This incident brought to light the role of the central banks world over in stemming the repercussions, with focus being shifted to conventional macroeconomic measures to ensure economic stability. However, some of the tools have been ineffective, especially in Africa, which is faced by a complex, different set of challenges. Argentina, Brazil, and Venezuela, they have tried on orthodox policies with depressingly orthodox consequences. <laughs> so what are the lessons from these emerging markets? Let me distill a few. Brazil's experience points to the risks and costs of letting central banks and public banks become fiscal agents and trying to promote growth through large amounts of subsidized lending. Mark you, I'm not trying to say that subsidized lending cannot be important. Of course it can. I'm not ideological about it. I think that properly managed subsidized lending targeted at small and medium enterprises and managed through the budget can work. Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela is the board chair of Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, and former Minister of Finance for Nigeria. The economist, policymaker, and thinker on finance and economic development expressed different views on the common narrative of creating a favorable business environment for foreign investors, noting that priority should be given to domestic investors first. So innovation along critical agricultural value chains needs to be prioritized. Unlocking the potential of Uganda's agriculture sector would also require significant improvements in rural land rights, which could simultaneously increase farmers' access to credits and investments, and in turn increase future productivity. A special presidential advisor on finance and former finance minister, Honorable Maria Chuanuka, said that the central bank should be more innovative and help government become more business astute in as much as it prides in its independence. So independent of its government should not be isolated from its government and from what's happening in its country. We need to look not just at prevention of inflation, but to see what do we need to cure the, that inflation. I mean, even the governor has said on several occasions that monetary policy is not always sufficient to handle this, this, this problem. The Bank of Uganda ensures macroeconomic stability by applying conventional methods. These have helped the government to achieve a substantive record inf inflationary rate of 5%. However, this alone is not enough in solving the challenges of economic growth and development. Monetary expansionism is built in the Western world will have an impact here in Africa. And we have seen this in other ways. 30 years ago, the likes of the bank, the World Bank and the IMF, they tried to, they did indeed, not tried to, they did insist and impose upon us to adopt policies to liberalize our economies. They said, adopt free market policies. You must become internationally competitive. Well, to, to an extent they were right. And what was then called the donor community and now we call development partners. <laughs> banged on the table and said, you must undertake structural adjustment. So we undertook structural adjustment. So what happened? We abandoned our vision for industrialization in that area. We have not industrialized. We have weakened our agricultural potential. The business environment is uncertain today, with some players calling for more affordable commercial bank interest rates. 
Concerns have also emerged on a planned government bailout of selected companies at the expense of the taxpayer, ignoring the agriculture sector. So how about those who provide the, provide the jobs, create the wealth, pay the taxes, have a seat at the high table of this policy conversation? How about, how about, even though they look like flea infested dogs in terms of their businesses and they're not necessarily attractive, how about we just listen and hear what it is that is called not famous and not as called the successes that we have? The panel discussion enriched the message of the lecture through underscoring the role of actionable projects, policy interventions, as well as strategic orientation for structural economic transformation of Uganda's regional and economic peers. The keynote address and the panel discussion marked the culmination of the public information engagements through which the Bank of Uganda has commemorated its Golden Jubilee.